السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ اہلن و سہلن و مرحبا بکم ویلکم بیک ٹو آور لائیو ہیلتھ پروگرام یور ہیلتھ کمنگ ٹو یو فرام برفرڈ لائیو الحمد للہ تعالیٰ ماشاء اللہ بفور دا بریک وی جسٹ ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ ڈسلیکسی اینڈ دا سائنس اینڈ سمٹمز دیٹ چلڈرن شو ان اسکول اینڈ وی آلسو ڈسکسنگ دا از وائٹل دا پیرنٹس ہیو اے بیسک نالج آف واٹ ڈسلیکسی از اینڈ دیز سائنس آئی مینشن وا سائنس دیٹ یو شوڈ کیپ آئی آؤ especially the biggest sign is an intelligent child who is falling behind in reading and writing. That's one of the biggest signs. And then all the other signs I went through as well. Look, I mentioned before that so many guys with dyslexia, you know, they're so clever. Let me run through a list. Tom Cruise, you know who Tom Cruise is? Tom Cruise, I'm sure you all know who Tom Cruise is. Tom Cruise is a, um, an actor. Good thing I didn't say Tom Cruise is a clown or something, then you think that this Manansa doesn't know what he's talking about either. So Tom Cruise is an actor, mashallah. Same thing with Leonardo da Vinci. He was a painter. He had uh, dyslexia issues. Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali, the famous boxer, may Allah illuminate his grave and grant him paradise. A very brave person. He had dyslexia. Richard Branson, Jamie Oliver, a celebrity chef. He has dyslexia. Albert Einstein has dyslexia. Jennifer Aniston, a film director. Pablo Picasso. Steven Spielberg. Whoopi Goldberg. And uh, we need some Muslim names on here as well. I'm going to do some original research and add some names on here. Maybe I've got dyslexia, I don't know. I'll add my name onto this list, inshallah. Uh, Allah wa alam, Allah knows. There'll be many Muslim people, uh, great scholars, no doubt who have dyslexia, but these are modern, almost modern people, so uh, they have dyslexia. So you get the idea, all these guys, somebody, somebody called Sher, S-H-E-R, Sher. Adil, is that how you pronounce it? S-H-E-R, Sher, yeah, some lady, uh, model, author, uh, professional lady, J. Lino, these are all famous people with dyslexia. Agatha Christie, Thomas Edison, Walt Disney, uh, Keanu Reeves, Keanu Reeves, I think Keanu Reeves is an actor. All these guys have dyslexia. So, you know, all those children who have, uh, mashallah, dyslexia, they're in good company. Alhamdulillah. So the main thing is the parents need to understand what dyslexia is. And I mentioned, I'll mention again, dyslexia is a learning disorder, a learning difficulty, which affects those skills which are needed for accurate reading, writing, spelling, phonological awareness, and verbal memory. That's what dyslexia is. And uh, it affects boys and girls equally almost huh. okay so now let's continue with what i was going to explain to you before the break so these children of dyslexia find it difficult to learn rules of games if you take them to maybe you know tennis they find it a bit difficult to understand the rules of tennis you take them swimming they find it a bit difficult you've got to explain to them properly and they've got to let it go into their mind so they find it a bit difficult but once they've understood it fantastic and uh, you I mentioned to you last time, when you keep criticizing a child, a child with dyslexia is most likely than not always being criticized. So a child with dyslexia will be criticized. Criticize, criticize until uh, the person says, whoever has dyslexia, huh. so uh, <clears throat> people with dyslexia, I'm just, there's a note here. Can dyslexic people read Quran? About 79% of them who have dyslexia have difficulty reading the Quran. 79%. The majority of the children with dyslexia also had difficulty reading the Quran Sharif Ayat. So there we are. In a normal classroom, in that classroom, 20% of children, so in a class of 10, two boys or girls, or one boy or one girl, will have dyslexia. Yeah? That means you know, they will find it very difficult to read the Qur'an. Do you see how important it is to be aware of dyslexia and have color-coded Qur'ans, have these children, you know, uh, be tested by their local, you know, uh, optometric uh, center uh, and see what overlay they need? It's so, so important because these children 
as I mentioned before, they'll be told off again and again and again. And when children are told off, you know what happens? This is what happens. They don't stop loving the parents. The children love the parents. They just stop loving themselves. You need soldier to say, a child with dyslexia or anybody else who's been told off, he will not stop loving his parents. That's natural. They'll stop loving themselves. Their self-esteem will plummet. That's the problem. And you know something? The biggest safeguard for your children against all kinds of social, you know, maladies and social problems from drugs to Allah Alam to everything is having high self-esteem. A child who has, because you can't keep looking after your children all the time, they'll be out in, in that wicked world with wicked people. What you can do is increase your children's self-respect and self-esteem and that, that, after the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, will keep your children safe from falling victim to X, Y, Z social maladies. You need, we need to increase our children's self-esteem. And the way we do that is we speak to them as, you know, equals. We be open with them. If they have dyslexia, we talk to them about what dyslexia is. We boost their emotions. We don't criticize. It's very easy to criticize. Very easy to criticize. You don't criticize children. They become wounded very easily. And we've all done it. May Allah forgive us. But things can easily be remedied by the grace of Allah. So always praise your children all the time. Small, small things should be praised all the time. You know, people when they leave the world, when they interview them just before they leave the world, what do they say? This is what they say. Oh, I wish we spent more time with our children. We wish we spent more time with that. Even this, uh, what's his name, uh, Apple Jobs, this uh, Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs, even him, Bichara, when, they, when he was leaving the world, you know, he said the same thing. You know, the time has gone so fast, I wish I spent more time with my family. So these children of ours, our families, are so close to us. But Shaitan has tied the noose around our ears and is leading us around in circles and making us do the harmful things to our own families. May Allah forgive us, and may Allah give us the tawfiq and ability to do things which make our own families happy. Alhamdulillah. Anyway, back to dyslexia. So these children find it difficult uh, learning the rules to games. They have difficulty keeping track of multi-step directions. They struggle with getting used to telling the time. And the biggest thing, they find it difficult learning languages. That's one of the strategies for, you know, ch schools should accommodate children with dyslexia is stop teaching them foreign languages. It's so hard for a dyslexic child to learn his own normal language, never mind a foreign language. And then after all this stuff, they become incredibly, incredibly frustrated, which affects their emotional uh, stability and their moods. And they have low self-esteem because they don't believe in themselves, unfortunately. So how do they, uh, do they kind of diagnose dyslexia? As I mentioned before, they diagnose it with the signs I've mentioned. There's uh, private evaluations, there's psychologists, there's uh, dyslexia centers, and they're very straightforward. And the child, as I mentioned before, you know, uh, when the children are about six years old, at that point, you should see the signs there. An intelligent child is falling behind in his reading, writing. That's the biggest sign for dyslexia. And you know, you shouldn't wait longer than that. Now, how do you help children with dyslexia? This is the main thing I want to go through today. Children with dyslexia need a variety of ways of learning. Number one, when a child with dyslexia learns, they need to be able to, let's go to kind of, you know, year two and three and four, you know, basics. Then they should be allowed to write in different colored pens. Different colors help the child's mind retain the information different ways multi multi-sensory input writing it on a board writing it on a piece of paper writing with different pens you know uh, writing on your hands or using different games these are ways the different ways you so you got the word let's say the word black you can write that make your child write that on a board on a paper with a different pen on a computer it will all work together to put it inside your child's mind so multi-sensory multi instruction in breaking down words, in remembering words. So people, children get you know, words from school, don't they? They get 10 words, 20 words. They learn these words. 
That is setting up a child to fail. In black and white, he'll never learn the words, ever. Them words should be written in different colours. The child should be given the, uh, you know, time to write them words in markers, in different colours, in using blocks to write the words down. Different ways, you know, to put the word into their, his, her mind. Number one. Number two, repetition and review of skills. A child with dyslexia should be given the time to repeat the words to learn them and then review. This is what happened in this book, Toe to Toe book. In this book, Toe to Toe, you have, uh, I mean, just, you know, it's too much to explain to you, but this is the most awesome book for anybody who is having difficulty reading. Guaranteed. If you can't read and your child is dyslexic, this book will make sure they read so, so well. There will be no difference in the reading of a non-dyslexic child and a dyslexic child. It's called Toe by Toe a highly structured multi-sensory reading manual for teachers and parents in this so they have a list of words here now when these words if you if a child looks like tune con pef any word they don't know they're like nonsense words but any words they don't know all you'll do you won't put x there you just put a, a small horizontal line because they will not let you criticize a child any further mashallah so a very good book ah uh, so as i was saying Teaching children comprehension strategies to help kids derive meaning from what they're reading. So children with dyslexia have issues with comprehension. It takes time. There are strategies in place which you can teach a child how to comprehend with. And here, these are probably American. Uh, the Wilson Method, uh, Preventing Academic Failure, the Linda Mood hyphen Bell Program. But the, one of the best methods I've realized for words is something a book called Stairway, Stairway to Learning or Stairway to Spelling. Stairway to Spelling is a book which has 500 of the most commonly used words in English. The child will be helped to memorize these words and then, alhamdulillah, when he's got these main 500 words which are most often used in reading and writing, anything else he can easily learn above and beyond. So in school, if your child is dyslexia, you should ask for extra time on tests. Why? Because children take, with dyslexia take longer to understand the words and to pour it out and write it on the paper. So extra time on tests, number one. Number two, acquire space to work. Children with dyslexia are easily, as with children with ADHD, are easily kind of, you know, uh, distracted. So a quiet place to work. Some children like to hum while they're working and that's fine. They should be allowed to home. And uh, the third thing, the children should have option to record the lectures. If the lectures are being given, the child should be allowed to record that so you can go home and listen to the lectures. Number four, the option to give verbal rather than written answers where appropriate. A child with this sex, should be able to give the answers in the spoken medium. He should be allowed to say the answers rather than write them down where this is appropriate. And number five, elimination of oral reading in class. A child with dyslexia finds it very difficult to read. So therefore, you know, they should allow him not to read at that stage until he's better. And number six, eliminate exemption from foreign language learning. Foreign language learning, it just doesn't make sense for a child with dyslexia. So they should allow a children with dyslexia not to learn foreign languages also listening to audio books instead of you know reading a child with dyslexia he can listen no problem alhamdulillah he can listen to the story you get pens now that actually uh, as you take them over the book they actually audibly read for you the text so listening to audio books as an alternative to reading number eight typing on a computer or tablet instead of writing Children find it difficult to write with severe dyslexia, so they are allowed to use a computer. And also, they can use apps that make learning fun by turning decoding of words into a game. There's many, many apps now dyslexic children can use, you know, and with so much benefit. And also, some children, because they go, when they're reading, they kind of lose focus, they should be allowed to use rulers, put a ruler under each line, which will help them keep focused on the line that they're reading. 
And the biggest thing is children with dyslexia need is they need emotional support. You need to build their resilience and self-esteem because before you diagnose dyslexia, if you diagnose dyslexia for your children, there'll be so many years that have already gone by and the damage has been done. So this self-esteem needs to be rebuilt and reboosted and revamped and re-upped and it can be done so. And the way you can do that is talk to your child and explain, you know that sometimes you have a hard time reading signs or copying notes from the board, that's dyslexia. There's many videos you can see on YouTube, let your children see that this is, as I mentioned, a whole list of people with dyslexia, this is nothing to be ashamed of, it's a strength. As I mentioned before, one man said that people who have, who are children of dyslexia, they should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because them children will, as they say in Urdu, apne validhen ke naam ko buland karenge. They will make their parents' name shine, that this kid is the son of such and such, or this girl is the daughter of such and such a person. They're very, very gifted people. But that will only occur if you support them, help them be diagnosed, and then put strategies in place for these children. And also, to boost the children's uh, self-esteem. You know, when children make mistakes, you know, you should say, you know, that was difficult for you, it was very hard, but in spite of that, you've done so well, example. And also, help them recognize their strengths. If your child's a good soccer player, good football player, say to them, mashallah, that, you know, you played so well, that was good teamwork, etc. You should always build, build their self-esteem. Always. You know, no amount of praise is too much praise. No amount of praise is too much praise. And no small amount of criticism is too small criticism. So it should be no criticism and plenty of praise. And uh, if your child starts saying things like, you know what, I'm stupid, I don't understand it, I'm daft, etc. Uh -uh. You should pull them up and take them words out of their vocabulary. And I mentioned last time as well, the main remedy for dyslexia, there's two major remedies for dyslexia. It takes between two to six months to see the difference. But one remedy I mentioned last time was something called Thuya 200. Thuya Occidentalis. Thuya 200 is very good for children with dyslexia. And the dose of this remedy is one tablet three times a day. Thuya Occidentalis. And the second remedy is called Hyosiamus Niger. Hyosiamus Niger. Again, this remedy is in the 30C potency and should be given three times daily as well. So two remedies given each three times a day. The first one was a three occidentalis in the 200C potency and the second remedy was Hyosimus Niger in the 30C potency. And alongside this, these books, Toe to Toe, very important, and Stay Way to Spelling is the, it's a blue book, A4 size. That's the second book, which is vital for children with dyslexia. It'll make all the difference. You know, you will not recognize your child after they've been through this book and after they've been through the uh, staircase to uh, spelling. And alongside that, plenty of omega-3 fatty acids, fish oils. Fish oils are so good for uh, the, the, the brain and uh, mental development, alhamdulillah. So, inshallah, next week we'll go through the remedies, the other remedies for, because the, the, uh, dyslexia is a continuum, so every child presents differently and these remedies will kind of cater for that. So, we'll do the next week, inshallah. Hope you found today beneficial. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to show patience and love to our children and our loved ones, our parents, our siblings, our kith and kin. May Allah ta'ala help us to make him happy. May Allah, may Allah help us to keep the fast of this month, inshallah. And until next time and next week, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.